Now, when we're dealing with product costing, there are two kind of methods that you can use when it comes to costing out your products. You can use a job order costing method or a process costing method. Now, job order costings are very specific. These are used for productions of large, unique, high cost items. It's very, very customizable. Okay. These are items that are usually built to order because of the customization of it. Uh, and the production process is divided into what we call batches or jobs uh, with a definitive start and finish time. So think about an example of this would be building a house. Building a house would be a job that's very customizable to the person who's ordering the house, who's getting it built. Uh, it has a definitive start and end time, and it's built to order. It's not done in mass production. Okay. When this happens, these costs are accumulated by jobs, by the job. So again, all the costs associated with the house goes to the house. So if we're looking at this from an illustration perspective, let's think about it this way. We have a job, call it the house, okay? And in order to create the house, there's three things that we have to have, three product costs, which are direct material, or material, labor, and manufacturing overhead. Now, material that's being used is going to happen or is going to go into the job in one of two ways. It's either going to go directly into the job, which we know as direct material, or it's going to go into manufacturing overhead, which we know as indirect material. Labor is going to do the same thing. Labor is either going to go in, into the job or manufacturing overhead. It's going to go to the job directly, that's direct labor, or it's going to go to MOH through indirect uh, labor. Now, direct material and direct labor are the easiest ones to apply to a job because they're direct. They're easily and conveniently traceable to that job. Manufacturing overhead, however, is not. We don't know exactly how much cost goes into the job at the time of the start of the job. So we have to do this thing where we have to apply it to the job. We have to estimate it. So the only way we can get cost from manufacturing overhead to the job in the beginning when it starts is through application or allotment. Okay. Uh, that's the main difference uh, when it comes to uh, indirects versus directs. Okay? Well, once the job's finished, then obviously we know if it's 100% finished, then it goes into finished goods inventory. And then once it's sold, then it goes into cost of goods sold. So it's a very straightforward, basic uh, avenue in which the costs go from job to finished goods to cost of goods sold. Okay? Now let's look at the other side. Let's look at the pro process costing. Process costing is used for mass productions of products that are essentially identical to each other. This would be the equivalent of pencils. When they make pencils, they create it in mass production and all the pencils are the same and you can't call the company and ask them to customize your pencil in a specific way because it's done in mass production. And there's no definitive start and end time. It's just these are run a lot of times 24 hours a day. Uh, these items are continually produced in a flow uh, of steps or processes. Uh, the costs for these are accumulated by process, usually by department. So let's look at how this looks from uh, an illustrated standpoint. So this time we have a product and it goes into its first process. Let's talk about maybe a, a bakery and they're building cakes. Okay. So the first process would probably be the mixing of the process. So in order to mix it and all this kind of stuff, you have to have, again, three things. You have to have material, you have to have labor, and you have to have some kind of manufacturing overhead. So the material, again, was going to be split up into direct and indirect. Labor is going to be split up into direct and indirect. And then, again, manufacturing overhead is going to be applied to the process. But once you finish mixing it, then it goes into the next process. Maybe the next process is baking it. So then you add another. So the costs from that process go to the next process. And that, again, it goes to the next process. But also the next process, maybe you're adding more material. So more material is going to be moved over. And maybe you're adding more labor. So more labor is going to be added to the second process. And then manufacturing is going to have to be applied to the second process. And this keeps going on for whatever process. So after baking, maybe it's packaging. That would be the third process. So that's three steps right there in that example. Once you get to the last process and it's done, then it moves out of the last process and into finished goods. And then obviously goes into cost of goods sold once you sell it. So again, the difference here is that job order costing is done to one single job, whereas process costing, the cost flows from process to process to process until it's finished.